every time I show up because I have a goodly power that speaks rather um, candidly about corruption, condemns corruption in the country. So I've been the victim of that kind of harassment. Do I feel safe in America? I mean, well, I do. But occasionally there are certain situations where, you know, if you're in a certain kind of neighborhood, Okay, if you are driving through certain states that are, you know, almost purely white, um, yes, you feel a sense of trepidation. This is a little uh, a sense of trepidation. By the way, when the police officer arrested me, I felt it was in the end a funny encounter. You know, when I told the story, I would tell it in a funny way. But in 2002, my wife and I went to Nigeria as two prize scholars to teach at the University of Lagos. And there, I met a young man who was in a wheelchair outside of the embassy carrying all kinds of placards in protest against America. So I went to talk to him against the advice of my American miners. You know, I asked him, who is this guy? He said, don't go there. So of course, what did I do? I went there straight. So I said to the guy, what's your story? He told me he used to live in California with his wife. The cost of living became unbearable. So he went to Houston, Texas to look at the prospect of relocating. So he went for a job interview. The day of the job interview, he discovered that he didn't have money for his lunch. So he stopped at a time to drop an, an ATM machine. Well, there was a line of people and he left the bank. Two minutes later, the police officer pulled up and took him into custody and said that the bank had reported that he walked into the bank, he robbed the bank, and then ran off again. So he tried to explain to the officer what had happened. They took him to their station, where they appointed a court appointed attorney for him, who then informed him that that bank had been robbed several times uh, recently and that he was being charged now as a suspect. He had a perfect alibi. He was in California when the robberies took place. And guess what? Somehow the American judicial system found him guilty of the crimes. And so the day he was pronounced guilty, he was very restless, he was very angry in court, and when he got to jail, he was very, very upset. And finally, a prison warden took him and flung him against the wall, and he cracked his mind. He finished starting his sentence and they began deportation proceedings. He told them that he was married to an American citizen and the judge asked him, I joined the case and asked him to bring proof during the next year. He sent a letter to his wife. He believes that letter was not posted by the prison authorities. So during the next year, the judge said to him, do you have proof that you are married to an American? He told the judge that he didn't believe the prison sent the letter to him because it was wife. And the judge said, I don't care, and signed his deportation. So they sent him back to Nigeria. That's why he's been protesting. Now, after I talked to him, he said that one American ambassador came and talked to him and promised restitution, promised to get him sent back to America to pursue his legal rights. But then the ambassador was quickly told to retreat from the case and he did. So, from that point on, the story of my own encounter became less fun for me. Actually, that brings us a bit to 